you can. Let me check here. So what we're gonna do is we are going to spend today dealing with this equation stuff, which I'll be honest, most of you are really good at this. The equations are one thing I never really have to worry about that much. So here's my two steps to this, and it goes pretty quick. I need to get the radical on a side by itself, if I can. Then I need to square both sides. And since the square root, my radical, and the squared, I can talk over it, are opposites and cancel, just what's underneath is going to be left over then. So here's how this works. This first one, the square root, is on a side by itself right now. There's not something else that I'm plusing or minusing to it or multiplying it by. So all I'm going to do then is I'm going to take this and I'm going to square both sides of the equation. Take it to the second power because the squared and the square root cancel. And then now here's the fun part. What's 4 squared? 16, because it's 4 times 4. That's the thing that's still getting some of you, when, even on the quiz yesterday. 4 squared, I saw a lot of 8s. And it's like 4 squared means, when we're doing this, yeah, 4 times 4. It just means I'm multiplying that number by itself that many times. So that's where the 16 is coming from, and I'm done, because x is by itself already. Not too bad of a deal. Okay. But you're not always going to have the radical on a side by itself right away. My first job is always to try and get that radical term alone. So if there's something outside the radical, like the minus 4 is here, I treat it just like an equation. I do the opposite. Because then I can go ahead and just add that 4 out. And now it looks basically, well, shoot, it is the same thing as example 1. Once that radical's alone, I just square both sides. And get my solution. But again, when I talk about the square root being alone, that can mean some different things. So like, for instance, let me pop back up towards the top. Is my square root alone? Well, no, it wasn't. Because here's my square root. I needed to get the minus 2 out of there first. Now you're like, do I have to get the minus 4 out of there too? Here's the difference with this one. Here, that minus 4 is underneath the square root. It's under the radical. So that's different. In that case, when I go to square both sides, since it's under the radical, I'm going to have to deal with it later. Okay, so a slight difference here. It's not under the radical. Here it is. So I'll have the x minus 4 left underneath because, again, the squared and the square root just cancel. I'm not squaring the stuff underneath. And then 5 squared is 25, and we get to the part that you guys are real good at, which is solving the equation that's left. And I'm ready and raring to go. So that is the one big caution here that I'm dealing with on these. Is going to be, is whatever's on that side under the radical or is it not? Here, my radical is alone. Even though that plus 3 is there, it's underneath the radical. So I've got to square both sides to get that out. And then again, 16 squared, probably going to have to go to the calculator on this one. My brain happens to be turned on really well this early in the morning today. So 16 times 16 is 256. And then what's my one step going to be to get x solved for? Yeah, minus the 3. So you'll notice these are quick. I mean, bless you. It's not going to be, you know, some of the longer type things. I'm not going to need my chart. I'm just doing equation stuff, but I'm having to dump the radical things before I do that. So if I move down a little further, same idea is going on. I need to isolate my radical first. Notice the plus 2 isn't underneath. 
so I do an opposite to move it out of the way. But I always have to have my radical by itself before I can square both sides. I can't square both sides on that problem right off the bat. That would get ugly. But once that radical's alone, I don't see anything else on the outside of it on that side, that's when it's time to go ahead and whack that square root out of there by squaring it. Again, I'm squaring my other side too. I can't just leave it as three. We do to one side, we gotta do to both. And now I just go into equation solver mode. And we can go ahead and divide and get to my answer. Now, occasionally, I may get one that looks kind of weird. Hence number four that we have here. Well, what happens if I have radicals on both sides? Okay. As long as I have one square root on each side, it's okay. But I can't have two. So I'm going to move this other radical to the other side. So on the left, I'll still have the square root of 3x plus 2. On the right, I'll still have the square root of x. You're like, but yeah, but now i got radicals on both sides. That's different than what we've done. But the idea is the same. They're isolated on each side. So I can square both sides still. And the squared and the square root's just going to cancel on both sides. And leave me with what's underneath. Now this is just my personal opinion. It's like I got x's on both sides. Since this side has only an x, I would move my 3x to the other side. Because if I move the 1x over here, sometimes for people forget there's a 0 and then they get stuck and think they can't go any further. So I just go ahead and move them all to that side. And then divide. A little bit longer than the other ones, but not a whole big change in what's actually going on. Everything's opposites until I get myself to the answer. So I think, yeah, I was going to say, I thought we had a couple more working on the back here. But those basically are the four different ones that we're going to see. Now, I just threw a couple of things here on the back. Oops, and that wasn't supposed to be all the way over just to make sure we've got this. Now here, I could do a couple of things. Personally, since that's a minus x squared, I'm going to do something weird to isolate my radical. I'm actually going to add the square root to the other side. Now why would you do that? Because I don't like dealing with negatives whenever possible. In life, in math, doesn't matter. So by moving it, now everything's positive. This is isolated. So I can square both sides, get my x alone, which is the idea anyway, and I'm good to go. So just keep telling yourself, isolate the variable, might have to add or subtract something first, we'll see. Once we're isolated, going to square both sides. It is. It's some of the detail work that goes here. Remembering to square both sides. Remembering squared means I'm multiplying that number by itself. And then just a simple thing is doing an opposite. mean the difference between things going well and things well not going quite as hot as we would like. And it just gets into like anything else in life. The more you get some practice at it, the easier it tends to get. If I have two radicals together, oops, I gotta move one, oops, I forgot it again, to the other side. So since I'm minusing it, I'll add it. And like we saw in the front, doesn't matter if I have one on each side as long as they're isolated. Because once I square it, the square root and the squared are opposites.
And like we said before, it's usually easier to get all my x's to one side. Because let me show you what happens if you minus the 2x. I have a feeling some of you might do this. So let's say I minus the 2x to both sides. Here's where our problem starts. A lot of people just leave it like this and go, I don't know what to do now. Well, if I have 2x and I minus 2x, I don't have anything left. So it would just be 0. And then I'd just solve it like I normally would. But people tend to forget about that part. And I'd get the same answer if I had a minus the 4x and then just divide it. All this is going to do is make me use up an extra step. And what fun is that? But I still can get an answer this way. Okay, so whether you do it like we did on number four on the front or you do it this way, get to the answer, it still works out. What if it's a fraction underneath? We don't care. It's still isolated. The squared and the square root still cancel. 3 squared is still 9. But now I look and I go, okay, what am I doing to x? I'm dividing it by 5. Okay, the opposite of dividing by 5 is to times by 5. And I get my answer that way. So that's all we're really looking at as far as these go. Now I believe, if I'm correct on this, that this would be assignment number three for our next homework check, which means probably, probably that Tuesday when we get back after break, we'll be looking at our next homework check.